Kaora Internet. You might remember a while back I showed you how to baste a very large quilt on a small table. I'm only going to worry about the part of the quilt that's on top of the table. I'll deal with the rest later. And at the time I promised that I would then show you how to quilt that very large quilt on a small domestic sewing machine. And of course now the really hard part begins because I've got to somehow quilt that massive, massive quilt on my little home sewing machine. But that is something for the next video. Well, it took a while, but I finally finished it. So here's how I quilt a very large quilt on a very small sewing machine. a very big quilt. Your first thought when you see something like this is where do I start? But the answer is simple, start in the middle. The middle is always going to be the hardest part because that's where I'm going to have the most fabric bunched up in the throat of my machine. But I like starting in the middle partly because of the psychology of it. You know it's only going to get easier as you go on. But the other reason to start in the middle is because as you quilt the quilt it's going to get stiffer which is going to make it harder to get into the throat of the machine. So if you start on the edges, eventually you're going to have to get into the middle and that's going to be really difficult because you've already quilted the outside parts. Once I've got the center under my needle, I'm going to lift all the rest of the quilt onto the table and loosely pile it up around the machine. If any of the quilt is hanging off the edge of the table, that's going to drag on the rest of it and make it really hard to move. The only part of the quilt that I need to be flat is the small section that I'm actually working on at any time. So I'm going to keep that nice and smooth and flat and then make sure the surrounding area is piled kind of loosely so that I can move it pretty easily. And the rest of the quilt, I just ignore it. As long as it's bundled up on the table, that's all I care about. I feel like I'm in a little nest here. Quilting something this big takes a bit of patience because you do have to keep stopping to rearrange the quilt so that the area you're working on can move freely, but it's totally possible. So that's how you quilt a very large quilt on a very small sewing machine. Don't forget to do all that. <laughs> all right then, I'll show you the rest of the quilting. I'm sure you want to see it. <laughs> I think I want to do something custom in each of the coloured shapes. So I'm going to keep the background really simple. I'm just going to do long wavy lines. I'm going to quilt the background first and come back and do the shapes later so that I can use a thread that blends a bit better. But for the two yellow rows, I can quilt the shapes as I get to them because the light grey I'm using for the background blends really well with the yellow. I haven't really planned in advance what I'm going to do in each shape. I'm just picking a design that seems to suit the shape. the background is done. So now I need to pick a thread colour that I can use for the shapes. I was thinking of just using a slightly darker grey but I'm not so sure now that it will actually work on all the colours. Okay problem solved. I bought some blue green and orangey red threads and I found a purple in my stash so I reckon between those three I should better find something that will suit all of the colours.
I wanted to do in those big borders but the wiggly lines in the background have been reminding me of waves so I think I'm gonna lean into the watery theme and quilt long leafy feathers that will hopefully look like fronds of seaweed. Okay, the quilting is finished, so it's time to put on some binding. I've got plenty of scraps left over from the fabrics I was using to make the quilt, so I'm going to make a scrappy rainbow binding. Yeah, I think that should almost be enough. the finished quilt. I am really pleased with how it turned out. I think it looks really really good. 
and my nephew, who it was a leaving home present for, was really thrilled with it as well, which is great. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process of quilting such an enormous quilt on a small machine. It's the biggest quilt I think I've done on that machine and yeah it was a struggle at times but it is possible. So I just wanted to prove to you that it can be done. It's not impossible to quilt a large quilt with free motion quilting just because you don't have a long arm. It just is going to take longer and be a bit more frustrating at times but it's possible. Now before I go I want to tell you about an exciting collaboration I've got coming up with Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore. If you haven't watched any of Brenda's videos before you really should go and check out her channel because she does these amazing series of videos where she'll take one simple block like say the churn dash and she'll work through all the possible variations of it and totally explore that block in depth. It's really interesting and you'll learn so much from her. Hello and welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and this is my introduction to my channel. We're a quilting channel and basically what we're doing is we're empowering other quilting artisans to think outside of the box and play and have fun with color and everything else. And I love to introduce people to other YouTubers. So this is one of the patterns that we might be doing a sew along. We try, I'm gonna try and do two case studies because we take basic blocks and we change them up just to show you how designers go about changing things. And then we're gonna try and do two sew alongs. We might be squeezing in a little mini sew along and we talk about um, this year in uh, 2022, we're going to be doing a, a series on strings and crumbs and then one on curves. So there's lots going on here. I do hope you join us at Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda on YouTube. We're also in the middle of setting up a website, but we haven't got there yet. There's only the two of us, my husband and myself. So I hope you come in and see us. And subscribe, like, and share if you have the opportunity. Okay, bye! So go and check out her channel and keep an eye out here for our collaboration, which should be happening sometime in April. Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment. And I will see you next time. Ka kite anō, internet. <laughs> Look, his finger just appeared at the top. <laughs> Lots of fingers.